Instagram. If you guys haven't subscribed already, reach over here in this right-hand corner and click that subscribe button. We're going to have a whole lot more videos coming out on hydroponic stuff because we're learning as we go too, guys. So you might as well learn from my mistakes and it won't cost you a dime. Hey guys, welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. In today's video, we're going to do some updates on the seeds that we started last week using the hydroponic material, the hydroponic method. And I also got my nursery channels, um, germination channels, plumbed in, timers on, nutrients in the tank, everything's working. I'm going to kind of give you my take on the whole process, um, how to not do some things that i did saves you some time save you some energy and i kind of give you a give you some feedback on the oasis trays that we use to start these seeds in so let me get over here and i'm gonna give you a shot of this all right so i hope these lights don't mess with that camera any they're led so i don't know but these two trays that i'm fixing to show you were the first trays that i ever started using a hydroponic method or using hydroponic material it's a tray of three different types of lettuce some bok choy, some Swiss chard, and then there's a full tray of red and green, what I call early cabbage. It's a small, personal size cabbage. And I don't think it's too bad. All of this, the first five are Tropicana. The next five is Mir. The next five is Bopak um, bok choy. Three rows of new red fire, and then five rows of bright light switch chart and then we got uh, red cabbage and some green cabbage now these are the nursery trays that I actually showed you in the last video the materials that I had in and what we got here is enough to hold four oasis trays we got a it was a 35 gallon tank I cut it down to 25 gallons so we got a 25 gallon tank there may be 15 gallons in that tank recirculation pumps in there that's going to pump it through here we got valves to where we can meter it down these lines on this side and I have expanded it to be able to use two more of these trays. Now, that will give us the ability to run eight 276 Oasis trays if we need to. And I've actually got some more over here that I'm germinating some more lettuce and you can see it's popping up really, really good. And I got some kohlrabi right there that I'm trying to germinate and so far, the germination rate on this stuff is very impressive. Look, I think there's a 100% germination in this tray here. And yeah, maybe not quite, I haven't seen one here, but I mean, still guys, out of 276 sales with no soil, that's impressive. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pump and about the setup and lines and all that good stuff. So there's a 620 gallon per hour pump in this tank. And that equates to about 10.3 gallons per minute that can run through the system. That's why you can see we got them peached off. Now I got it on a timer where it runs two times a day. It runs six in the morning and it runs 12, it runs at noon, then it runs six in the afternoon and midnight. So, and I can only set it for 30 minute intervals. So I figure it's feeding for two hours a day um, total. I mean, that's over a 24 hour period. I don't think it's too much because, you know, looking at them, they don't look like they're getting overfed and they're actually responding really, really good. Right now I'm gonna turn it on, turn the timer part off and turn the, the switch on and the pump's going to kick on and you can see that it's going to start flowing here and what it's going to do is fill up to the level where to start draining here and then it's going to drain back into the tank using that pipe same way here it's going to fill up to those bottom of that line and drain back in this tube back in the tank so on and so forth just recycles all the way around and you can see well maybe you can't see you'll see it running out of here shortly there it comes starting to come out now but basically what it's gonna do is run for 30 minutes. This oasis is gonna absorb that water and it's gonna hold on to it and slowly leach it back out. And that gives the roots of these plants the opportunity to feed on the nutrients that's coming back into this tank. And uh, they're actually growing pretty good. They, all these plants here are less than seven days old, every one of them. So, and like I said, that germination rate has really been impressive. And before I get ahead of myself, I'm gonna tell you what kind of nutrients that we're using and how much we're using in this tank. So right now we're using the pre-mixed um, HydroGrow hydroponic fertilizer from Crop King. And it's the leafy green concentrated mix. And calcium nitrate. So we're mixing this about um, half strength, maybe a little more than half strength and you know i was afraid that the salt concentration i was going to have 
an impact over here but so far everything's staying green so far everything's growing and i'm seeing you know new growth every day so when you're mixing this stuff it goes by teaspoons and you know you have to do the math but i go by tablespoons because that's where my mixture is at and basically is a uh, two to one ratio so you're going to use half the amount of calcium nitrate that you're going to use for your hydroponic fertilizer or your leafy green concentration mix and like i said i'm just testing the water with this stuff i imagine i'll probably switch over to something else but one thing that is very important is to get your ph right in your water and that's where these guys come in this test pen that can test the ph and it can test the ec of the water now the ph is important because plants can only uptake certain minerals when the ph of the water is at a certain level and i'm learning that the ph of our well water is not where i thought it was at 5.5 it's on the upper side of seven to eight and you know learning that after i started mixing this stuff um took a little bit more time than i thought so what i'm gonna do is check the ph of this now and i've used and i'll show you in a minute but i've used ph up and i've used ph down in the same water because it does not take a whole lot of ph down yeah ph down to bring the ph of this water down trust me it doesn't take much at all so right now you see we're sitting at about a 6.04 which is okay you know most of the tables that i read you know you need to be between six and six and a half and the biggest mineral that is up you, you can uptake in that range is calcium calcium has a very fine line um, where the plants like to uptake it six is a little bit on the low side and seven is a little bit on the low side so most of the absorption is going to be in the six range the next one we're going to check is ec and right now we're sitting at a 2.6 2.5 2.6 which is okay for leafy greens lettuce it may be a little high for small starts like what we've got here but what you're measuring with ec is the amount of nutri nutrients you've got in this tank it's measuring the conductivity of the water and it can detect um the solids or it can detect the material that's in the water so once you mix your nutrients in here you can kind of adjust the level of that um, by mixing more fresh water in it to bring it down or more nutrients to bring it up so for this tank here and for what we're trying to do these leafy greens here we're going to kind of keep stay around a two a 2.5 uh, ec and we're going to keep the ph around six six and a half until we get ready to transplant them outside now with the ec may increase it may lower it just depends um, because you got to figure here we're on a time feeding schedule where we're only going to feed basically four times a day out when we get into the main tunnel they're going to be constantly fed all the time so they'll be able to grow quicker with more nutrients being fed to them consistently 24 7. so yeah that was a learning curve because like i said um one tip that i can give you is mix your nutrients before you adjust your ph because once you mix your nutrients in your tank your ph is probably going to go up and i found that out the hard way but mix your nutrients get your ec right and then adjust your ph up or down you see i got both you can adjust it up or down depending on where you need to be now like i said i'm just learning this stuff and everything i read said ec around two two and a half for lettuce with a ph of six uh, six between six and six and a half somewhere around in there and i got a scale somewhere i got offline and if i can find it i'll try to put a picture of it somewhere here so you can see what i'm talking about how you know at a certain ph all of the nutrients can be uptake about at the same rate or the same amount all right so let's talk about this oasis stuff here for a minute um and how easy it is to use i'm gonna move this tray just a minute so you remember me telling you earlier let me get out the sun too you remember me telling you in the beginning that this stuff was very very fragile it really did not like to be handled and it felt like you were going to bend it or break it every time you picked it up well that is magnified when it starts absorbing water you cannot pick this stuff up without breaking it once it gets wet it is heavy it is almost impossible to get the full sheet up so what i learned and it may not be correct but it works it's working for me is to put it in one of like these daisy trays um and it'll sit right down in there you may have to kind of finagle it a little bit but it'll go right down in them daisy trays now that gives you the ability to pick it up as a whole and i'm gonna use 
another daisy tree. So this is what you can see me germinating these guys in. And what we do is I put a little bit of water in here, you know, every other day, and I kind of feel it. If it feels damp, I don't mess with it. If it feels kind of dry at the top, then I'll put a little bit of water in it. But I take that daisy tray and sit it inside of that and let it absorb all the water. So when you get ready to pick it up, guess what? You can pick up the whole tray and you can kind of keep it level. Now in turn, you can sit it down inside of these germination trays and guess what? It fits right in there with them. So that's the way we're gonna start doing it. I had done four trays before I realized I could do it that way. So, you know, lesson learned. If you're gonna use Oasis, figure out a way to transplant that stuff or pick that stuff up or move it without the need to actually put your hands on them. Because like I said, once this stuff gets wet, and you can see it literally wants to snap. You know, there's really no easy way to do that. And it may not, it may not mess with the function of it at all, but it is, it's like you gotta handle something twice all the time. And that's pretty aggravating, especially me. I don't like doing that. All right, so right now, as far as this goes, um, this as far as I've been so far, I haven't got anything else done. I did dig some holes to start building a brace in the tunnel, and I'll show you that here in a minute. But I thought this was pretty cool. And this thing is pretty much, um, you know, automated. It, it cuts itself off and on. I don't have to mess with it. I come in in the morning and check them. They look good. I check the pH, I check the EC, everything's good. And I walk off from it. It takes me five minutes a day to take care of this stuff. Now, once these things get a little bigger, I'm figuring it's gonna take about two weeks for them to come out of here and they go outside, that's gonna be a different story. I'm gonna have to constantly come in here and keep checking, make sure, you know, things are running, things ain't stopped up, pumps ain't stopped up, so on and so forth. But it's gonna be like that until we get this thing dialed in, we get it to where we can manage it without it managing us. All right, guys, so I'm gonna take you out here in the tunnel and show you kind of what the plan is. And I'm not gonna go in real in depth with it because I'm just now bringing materials home and I'm kind of got my head wrapped around what I wanna do and been thinking through this thing. So you've heard me talk about the, the system that we're gonna use in this tunnel. Um, one side of it, we're gonna use an NFT, which is a nutrient film technique. And I'm gonna shine it. I got the channels put together this week and basically there's some little bit of gluing involved. But you can see these are the eight foot channels. And I mean, they're light as a feather. They don't weigh anything. But you glue, this is the end. That is the feed end. It's got a little hole drilled in it where you stick the tube in. And I got 20 of these guys ready to go in. Now, my plan is to put these guys two inches apart. So, um, basically we're gonna take up roughly 12 feet to start with. Right, it's 10 foot of channel. And you know, we're gonna put two inches in between. So that's gonna be more than 12 feet. It's gonna be more like maybe 14 to 16 feet somewhere in there. Anyway, I got 16 feet laid out here to work with, to start with. So you can see I'm digging holes. I got posts in here. So we're gonna put a post, eight feet, another post, eight feet, another post. This is not gonna have a center post, but there is gonna be a post here. Three posts on this side, three posts on this side, one center post. We're gonna go around with two by fours, treated two by fours, and then we're gonna run some two by fours up in the middle for support. Now, my idea is this thing's gonna have to have a two inch drop on it, at least a two inch drop on it. Uh, so that means on this side, it's gonna be two feet higher than this side, just to get the drain, get the water to drain off like it's supposed to. Everything that I read, everything that I watched says about a pint to a liter a minute, pint liter, somewhere around in there. And that's gonna be important to be able to move that amount of water downhill because everything free flows from the track, the track to the drain. So we wanna make sure we got enough fall on it so we can move that amount of water down there. So yeah, I'm gonna get off here and go ahead and start cementing some of these poles underground. If you guys haven't subscribed already, reach over here in this right hand corner and click that subscribe button. We're gonna have a whole lot more videos coming out on hydroponic stuff because we're learning as we go too, guys. So you might as well learn from my mistakes and it won't cost you a dime. And as always, guys, we appreciate you stopping by. We thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.